do the limbo. Humans aren't the only ones who enjoy slipping and sliding. Come on, let's do another run. It's easy to find humor in animal behavior. Sometimes even our best attempts to interact with wildlife can go haywire. So leave your serious side behind. Bring along your smiles, chuckles and laughter. I'm Marty Stauffer. Join me and the animals for Fantastic Follies. I meant to do that. I love springtime. Look at this day. What a beautiful day. I'm at a favorite camping spot in Montana with my brothers Mark and Marshall and a pet raccoon, Rocky. Where is this spot anyway? Well, you know, right down here, down at this ravine where that creek comes in. We are revisiting an area we know to have bears. Bears are playful creatures, and like this cub, they're always looking for something to do. A rare meeting between a black bear cub and a grizzly cub is destined for fun, a game of tag, and a little hide and seek. Uh-uh, you're it. Hey, let's both be it. Cool. Made you look. Wait a second, I wasn't ready. Follow me. I don't think so. Where'd he go? Darn just when we were having so much fun. But the black bear cub is up a tree, literally, and wondering, now that I'm up, how the heck do I get down? The encounter leaves no doubt that the climber of this wild pair is the black bear. Meanwhile, the tree-bound playmate becomes a little too bold. Look, Ma, no hands. He sure is taking his sweet time coming down. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yikes, this guy's dangerous. I'm out of here. 
Maybe I'll climb a tree. It's not so easy. Though not a climber, the persistent cub will try its hand in the bush leaves. Leaving Marshall and his pet raccoon behind for the moment, Mark and I quietly approach the cute cub. I'm it. No, you're it. No, I'm it. We continue to cautiously observe the little fur ball, while nearby, Marshall looks for Rocky, who's now lost in the underbrush. Come here, Rocky. Where are you? Rocky! Rock! Now you're it! Marshall! Marshall! Get over here! I'm looking for Rocky. Get over here! This Give me a second. I'm looking for Rocky. Leave Rocky. Come on. Give me a second. Get over here! Oh, the follies of we humans when it comes to motherly protection. Uh-oh. Whoa, mama. Come on, run. Run. Hello. Goodbye. Come on, Marty. Come on, come on. Come on. I know the grizzly can't climb, but that won't help me unless I can. Not my hat. Okay, you can have the hat. You can have the hat. That was exciting. <laughs> Man. Excuse me, ma'am. Your cub is right over here. <laughs> oh. Give me up here. I'm still hanging on. <sighs> Fortunately for us, a grizzly is better at somersaults than tree climbing. Grizzly 3, Brothers 0. But no scoring is necessary for this coyote. Playing catch with himself, how can he lose? He shoots, he scores! However, when a coyote travels to marmot country, that's a different ball game. The ear-splitting whistles are a primary defense against intruders. But the marmot is not above playing a game of hide-and-seek to frustrate the gullible coyote. Oh, yoo-hoo!
perplexed coyote runs from one burrow to another, as if to say, all right, you marmots, freeze. Hey, we're over here. Not now. Nanny nanny poo poo, you can't catch me. Stop that. Whoops, darn slippery rock. So long, sucker. The outwitted coyote even tries hunting voles without success. Today just is not his day. Marmots two, coyote zero. These belligerent young badgers are also in search of a meal, or maybe just a playmate. An unfortunate box turtle happens by. Whoa, hello. The inquisitive badgers can hardly believe their luck in locating this prize. But after just one sniff, sister decides to find something more fulfilling, leaving brother badger to investigate. He's just got to find out what's moving inside that shell. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Why am I digging? Oh yeah, I'm hungry. Get it. Ho, ho, ho. Adios, baby. Box Turtle 1, Badger 0. Without a shell for protection, the raccoon is up a tree, safe for now from the foraging black bear. Well, sort of. But this does not fool Br'er Bear. His keen sense of smell and constant curiosity lead him right to the balancing bandit. Whoa! Now see what you've done? Yo, dude! Don't even think about it. Do you mind? Will you be my friend? Buzz off, bozo. Although the bear outweighs the raccoon by at least 20 times, and could easily have a raccoon nacho, Br'er Bear seems more interested in playing than snacking. Raccoons, being mainly nocturnal, do a lot of foraging at night.
These three are not at all shy when the window in an inviting cabin is left open. Their inquisitive nature is about to get them in trouble. Here, fishy, fishy. Sometimes raccoons can be very persistent. Somebody stop me. Bacon and eggs, anyone? Not me. I'm too hot to eat. Having created enough destruction, Bandit 1 exits. Bandit 2 is still focused on the task at hand, so Bandit 3 slips out, leaving the obstinate angler still trying to bag a limit. This raccoon is about to get more than he bargained for. He just doesn't know it yet. Canada geese are among our most beautiful waterfowl. The raccoon is about to discover that the Canada goose is also a most belligerent bird. Not so fast, you pesky raccoon. This masked bandit knows what he's after, those delicious goose eggs. And he's bold enough to risk the consequences. Don't go there. Stay out. Uh, belligerent C1, egg napper, well, you get the picture. It seems that wherever Canada geese are, they tend to take charge, even an IRS parking lot. Stopping traffic is just second nature to them. Not me. I'm a Canada goose. Come along, children. Hey, wait for me. My personal goose tale begins one warm summer afternoon. Ooh, what are you doing? I'm supposed to be feeding them. Our backyard has become a motel for three rambunctious guests. The two river otters enjoy sharing a plastic pool with our son Luke and daughter Hannah. However, the pushy goose decides that water should be the exclusive domain of, what else, waterfowl. Hey Goose, honk this. You talking to me? 
Why I oughta. You oughta what, fuzzball? You want some of this? You want some of this? <laughs> One otter decides, I've had enough. It's slip and slide for me, while the aggressive honker takes possession of the pool. Go ahead, make my day. There's a West Coast cousin of the playful river otter that I've watched with fascination for many years. Its lovable antics are legendary. The sea otter can perform amazing feats with its paws and flippers, but until its encounter with a patch of kelp, I didn't know it could waltz. scared me. Now, where was I? The otter decides that the dance is done. Now for a seafood lunch. This clever aquanaut has learned to pound an abalone with a rock to dislodge it. This time, we hear it knocking, but it can't come in. The seals seem bored by the whole process. Maybe it's time for a little nap. I want food! Mom! Mom! The wake-up call for the Clark's Nutcracker Mom is unmistakable. Food! Food! Me! No! Me! No! Me! Sometimes, in a rush to soothe ruffled feathers, Mother gets a little carried away mistaking the size of the noise with the size of the mouth. The capable garter snake makes a valiant attempt to consume a large mouthful of banana slug. The slug, however, has other ideas. As if its size alone were not enough of a problem for the reptile, the slug is excreting large quantities of mucus to thwart its attacker. And the bigger the slug, the more mucus it produces. Ew. What the snake gets is a very different mouthful than it had in mind. I guess we've all had an experience with our eyes being bigger than our stomachs. Maybe the snake could take a tip from the golden mantled squirrel. Why don't you just eat with your mouth full? This gray squirrel would rather eat upside down. This arctic squirrel just likes to hang around, period.
He's content to watch the female tend to all the household duties. She has other ideas. Get over here, you lazy bum, and help me. Just uh, give me a minute. I'm uh, exercising. And one, and two. Whew. Finished. Some animals, like the marten, never sit still. They jump for the sheer joy of it. However, the marten would rather play cat and mouse, or marten and mouse. A white-footed mouse is driven out of hiding, but its young predator hasn't yet mastered the technique. rodent goes out on a limb to escape. This is a favorite mouse trick that seems to frustrate the hungry hunter. Da da da! It's Super Mouse! <laughs> you rascally rodent! You vexing varmint! Mouse one, Martin zero. Animals have difficult days just like us. At times, even keeping on their feet is a chore. However, this black bear is not just having a bad day, it's having an awful day. When you itch all over, well, you need some diversion. Doo -doo -doo. Well, hello, what's this? A stick. I love this stick. Look, another stick. Well, hello, darling. Shall we dance? Oh, my butt still itches. Oh no, could be cooties. Ah, what a great day for a walk. Wonder why no one else is out on the ice. 911, 911. This is not funny. Even deadly predators like the Harris hawk can have a trying day. This one is compliments of several crazy kamikazes. Seems the hawk is making itself comfortable a little too close to the nest of a pair of shrikes.
Fighter pilots, prepare for takeoff. Da -da -da, charge! Hawk Zero Strikes 21. Tiny can be mighty. Take the desert burrowing kangaroo rat. It can be a victim of the deadly sidewinder, but not always. This is no 99 pound beetle. Well, actually it is. Take that, and that, and that, and that, and that. This quarter pounder kicks sand in the face of this downsized rattler. Finally, enough is enough. Rat, 10. Sidewinder, zero. Ounce for ounce, this deer mouse can whip its weight in wildcats. Well, at least it thinks it can. The much larger grasshopper mouse is in for the rodent version of Let's Play Choo Choo. The half pint latches onto the grasshopper mouse's tail and becomes an unwelcome caboose. Ouch! Coming full circle, the deer mouse has given much better than it's gotten. Maybe the most peckish of all territorial disputes is the mockingbird versus mirror standoff. This bird just can't tolerate itself being on its own turf during mating season. One last there, take that, and the bird is off. Almost. Mockingbird one, Mockingbird zero. We've always had animals around the house. Before our son Luke was born and daughter Hannah was only a toddler, Diane and I raised two orphaned fishers. In a silly mood, we named them Porky and Spud. Who's getting hungry? Hannah thinks they're perfect playmates. Sure she does. She doesn't have to clean up their mess. Come out, you guys. Good boy. Oh, boy. Stuff to play with. Come on, follow me. 
Downstairs in your cage. This is it. I think we got to get rid of them today because they are just making too much of a mess. I can't. Sit. Look, look. To create peace in the home, I spend a great deal of time over the next few weeks teaching the youngsters to hunt. But they still need more practice. You can catch him pretty good. You just can't catch him good enough. <laughs> All right, where's Porky now? I keep asking myself, are they ready to be on their own? More importantly, can I keep them from playing long enough to find out? for you to come live in the woods too. I'm ready too. One final lesson with a favorite fisher food, porcupine. Okay, I admit it, I'm a softie when it comes to those fishers. So I remove a few thousand quills from the porcupine, just to make it easier on them and on me. There's no way I want to spend the whole day pulling quills from their noses. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Okay, this is the last big lesson. This thing is dangerous. I took some of its quills out. You just have to see what you can do. You're the only animal in the world that can eat one of these things. The porcupine. Be careful. <laughs> hey, you're... come back here. You're gonna have to learn it on your own. It's gonna be a lot tougher. Without me here with pliers to pull out the quills, I'll tell you that. Maybe they don't all eat porcupines. Sometimes my encounters with animals leave me breathless, or wishing I were. One summer day, these baby skunks decide I'm their mama. Not wanting that responsibility, I remove myself as quickly as possible. talk about being chased by animals, these Georgia wild hogs are not at all keen on me wandering in their territory. mother's protection of her young is even stronger. 
High in the mountains of Montana, wolverine cubs play near their den in a snow hollow and up a nearby tree. I'm on a solo excursion from a family campsite when I discover the busy pair having a ball. If I can just get to the... Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Come on, pause, do your stuff. Whoa. With one out on a limb, the other eagerly joins in. What you doing? Hey, this is too high. I'm going back down. I can fly! Not. Well, that's one way to get down. Hey, look out below! <laughs> Eager to share my discovery, I lead my brothers and our father back to the spot. The cubs scamper and hide as we approach. It's not long before their curiosity gets the best of them. Get back in there. Get back in there. Get back in there. I can't help being playful with the cubs, but I control my urge to handle them. You gotta better keep that thing away from your face. Oh, here comes a mother! Well, we asked for that. Yeah, she probably hurt her cubs. What about all her stuff? Leave it, come back when she's gone. <laughs> Dad is right, but in the meantime, my poor pack and hat are in for more abuse. A wild animal's curiosity and human carelessness can lead to some silly encounters. A temporarily vacated champagne picnic is a welcome attraction for a pair of chipmunks. They enjoy every drop and morsel of this delightful spread. This certainly is delicious water. <laughs> but even natural processes can offer surprises. As they spoil, apples can ferment naturally. When animals like these deer consume large quantities of the fruit, the alcohol affects them like it affects humans. I feel so young. Uh. 
I'm not feeling so good. Maybe I'll just sit down. Wild animals are curious about human habitats. The old homestead is always a treasure trove for elk brave enough or curious enough to risk it. Barbecue anyone? Maybe not. A camper's tent can provide hours of enjoyment. Well, minutes at least. What the heck is this? It's alive! And what's this? Lunch? No. Hmm. Must be good for something. Cool, an itching thing. Ooh, that's the spot. There's nothing quite as cute as fox kids. Their antics always make me laugh. At times, their energetic nature can get them into trouble. This crawfish has emerged from a nearby pond. The kit notices movement and simply must investigate. The crawfish decides, no thanks, and clamps on. Though not serious, the pincher is annoying. Meanwhile, a perplexed fledgling great horned owl watches this kit teeth at the base of a tree. The score for crawfish and fox? Hmm, let's call it a tie. My dad, brothers, and I are camped near a great fishing spot. Pretty good breakfast. Mm-hmm. Passable. We've just finished breakfast when... Where you going? Lunch. Do good. Always hungry, that marshal. While we relax at camp, Marshall casts into the swift waters. He's after a meal for us, and his pet raccoon, Rocky. Oh, Rocky. 
Come on. Come on here. Let's see what's going on. Okay. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh yeah. Got some sunglasses on. I'm cleaning my sunglasses. A pair of fox kits have become separated from their mother and are stranded on a gravel bar in the swollen stream. Well, brother, this is another fine mess you've gotten us into. Mom, come and get me. But the current is too swift for the female fox. Better be good. Hurry up. We've got two baby fox cubs on this island. We got the mother over here. What? Here, give me the rope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the rope across there and we can pull those cubs over there. We'll get the cubs, bring them over to you. Our plan seems pretty good, in the beginning at least. Hang on! We hang on for dear life as Marshall fights the swift current. Mission accomplished. The score? Who cares? It's irrelevant. We're all winners when it comes to helping animals 
and enjoying their antics. Uh, you made it. Congratulations. Yeah, we got him over there. Uh, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that felt good. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America. <laughs>